Who's next? Oh, well, let's go to Darius in Illinois. Thanks for waiting. Hi, Darius. Are you there? Hey, Maddie and Jane. Hey. Hi. Yeah, we hear you. How you doing? Pretty good. Um, so, um, I'm, the last call was pretty long, so I'll probably make this uh, short, short. Um, okay. So, I am, I am consider myself a theist, uh, but I am very skeptical and I ask myself a lot of a lot of questions. In fact, I don't think that I would disagree with pretty much anything that you you have said. I think that the points that you have brought up in your logical reasoning and for the reason for why you think the way you do is valid. Um and I accept all that. Um I'm still a theist. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll, evidently, we'll fix that before this call's over. Maybe. I, I mean, if you're if you're in agreement, because it says here that the question you wanted to ask is, if God were to reveal reveal Himself, would we believe? Right, right. So, and, and so my answer to that is yes. However, so, uh, I don't know how uh, it could be possible for me to be confident that a God has in fact revealed himself. How do I tell the difference between something that claims to be a God that I don't understand and something that, uh, or something that is a God that I don't understand and something that isn't a God but claims to be that I don't understand? How do I tell the difference? Um, well, the question that I was, I was getting at is if you were to, you know, just go home tonight and God were to reveal himself to you, you and only you in a way that is undeniable, would you then become a theist and, you know, quit the show and just if, to make fun of you and all those, those things? If there was a God that could convince me that he was a God, yes, I would believe it because you, I'd be you convinced. Kinda, you kind of poisoned the question, though, because you said, if I were to go home and a God were to reveal himself to me and only me, in a way that was undeniable. And I would be able to <laughs> reveal well, it to other people. Well, now, now you've said it's undeniable, so clearly I can't possibly deny it. Yeah, right. That's that's the problem. If I were to go home and have an experience that seemed to me to be a God revealing itself to me, I don't know what that would be like, and I don't know how this how this God would go about demonstrating that it's a real experience. And I'd not, go, right, I'd make sure that I'm not hallucinating somehow, and I, I'd go through some hoops. Yeah. And, and and it doesn't make sense uh, for God to reveal himself privately to an individual and then stay hidden from everybody else. Because now all that God is doing is essentially propping people up to look ridiculous. Right. But, I, you know, my biggest thing on that question is if there was a God that could convince, that could do everything, then couldn't he convince me? Like, wouldn't I be convinced right now? Wouldn't he know how to convince me? Um, yes, I agree. Um, okay, that was just a question that I... Sure. That I was just... I just want to ask. I, Which God do you believe in? I, I like the question, and and it's it's one of those things, you know, people used to ask what would convince you, and, and I, I won't go down that road again today, but the thing is... Oh, there's the thing is again. You can go ahead and post that on Twitter, whoever it was that called me out on it. My issue here is I don't know how I could ever be convinced that it, an interaction I had was with a god. Because take, for example, alien abduction stories. People, okay. people have these experiences. They are convinced that they've been abducted by aliens. And if I were to have one of those experiences, I'm not sure w w how I could become confident that it was an alien as opposed to just something that I didn't understand. Now, the, you get to a point, I would think, where... Let's say this entity appears in my living room, just boom, mm -hmm. and you know I can touch it, interact it, and it, it's uh, perhaps a, an overwhelming presence and light, and it makes me feel a certain way, and then it starts doing these really great magic tricks that you know would not only fool Penn and Teller, but you know would perhaps uh, be viewed as impossible. It's going to produce things and all this you would get to a point where I'd be like, okay, you're as close to a God as anything I can imagine, and I am, I'm, I'm probably convinced that you're real and this is an hallucination, but I would need independent confirmation of that. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, if it refused to give independent confirmation, well, now I'm wondering if, if I need to be locked away in a psychiatric well, right. ward because there may well be something seriously wrong with me. But additionally, that God, if you claim to be a God and not an alien, would have to, you know, if he wanted me to worship it, it'd have to, it'd have to give me a... Oh, I still wouldn't worship it. <laughs> there would be a whole lot more that we'd have to go along if you want me to get to the level of I believe in God to the point where I'm going to go to church every week and I'm going to pray before every meal, I'm going to do this and that and basically shape my entire life around it. Yeah, that would be a completely different thing. It's kind of like telling me that there's somebody who's in love with me Right. It, it's interesting, cool. but I'm not so under what? any obligation to share that that uh, admiration or, or fondness or anything like that. Right. And so even if I were convinced that God exists, uh, okay. w- worship is completely off the table because I'm not convinced that any entity or being that could be deserving of anything close to worship would ever demand or expect it. Mm-hmm. I think that's an instant disqualifier. Agreed. Okay, I agree. Um, another question. Do I you have. agree? So where do you, where do you? No, think seriously, that, I'm asking. Do um, you do you actually agree with what he just said? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I've followed this show for for months now. Um, although I'm a theist, I just found it really in, interesting, and I found myself, you know, asking myself the same questions and. My well, mom is... The reason that I ask if you actually you, agree is because you claim that to believe in something, right? Do you believe that that something requires you to worship it? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Or I, I'm not sure like which, which, um, which God you believe in. Um, do, do you mind telling me which one you believe in? Uh, the God of the Bible. Okay, so an Abrahamic God? Right. So, do you believe that God wants you to worship Him? Uh, yes, I believe so. So then, do you agree with Matt's statement about if something were an actual God and wanted me to worship it, then that would immediately be a disqualifier for me to worship it? Do you do you actually agree with that? I don't, I don't think He requires you to worship it. I think that He He wants a relationship with you, and and that you. You want to you want to worship because of But what if you don't want to? What happens to you? It, it's kind of strange too that you talk about God wanting a relationship because if somebody wants a relationship with me, that's not all that difficult. And certainly it shouldn't be that difficult to convince me that they exist and want a relationship with me, even if I don't want a relationship with them. And yet we live on a spinning ball in space where for thousands of years people have continually told me, well, not for thousands of years, they haven't told me because I'm not quite that old, but they continue to offer up this idea that there's a God who wants a relationship with you. And all I hear every time is, I have a girlfriend and she goes to another school and that's why you don't know her. (laughs) Where where is this God? So do you think that um, nah, I don't know how to post that question. Uh, well, I guess one more question that I had was, where do you think the God claim came from? Where did, where did it, it start from? Why did... Ignorance did and came? fear. A desire for explanation. When you, when you have a group of people that begin to expand beyond a single family where there's elders clearly in charge and you begin to build civilization... You need things that will keep people in line and quell their curiosity about the things that they don't have an answer about. Because the truth of the matter is, not everyone is a capable, rational thinker. And so I can make a case to someone about why they shouldn't go and kill someone. And if it's ultimately unconvincing because that person just can't see reason or is blinded by their own uh, bias and self-worth, then what else do we do? And one of the answers is to say, ah, there's a magic man who sees everything that you do, and he will punish you if you kill someone, even if none of the rest of us know it. It's an incredibly useful tool. It also helps to explain how I can be sitting here having a conversation with Jenna, and if I fall over dead, Jenna's like, well, everything about Matt looks the same, except he's in a lump on the ground. So what happened between when I was talking with Matt and when Matt stopped talking? Well, clearly, 
something left his body and it must have gone somewhere. And so we build these stories to explain the things that we don't know, to explain the things that we fear, and to encourage people to participate cooperatively in a society. And one of the unfortunate side effects of all this is that one of the best ways to make sure that your little group stays together is to make it special and different from others. It creates an us versus them mentality where the Israelites are God's chosen people and everybody else can get fucked. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now that's just a guess. Okay. <laughs> but it, it, it it seems to be consistent with the way things work. And certainly, if, like if there was only ever one religion, like if, if there'd only been one, that would be pretty miraculous. Right. And it'd be a little harder. It'd be harder to argue <laughs> against. But we have so many different examples of, okay, well, look at this religion. Right. And every religion is pointing at every other one and going, nope, you got it wrong. Nope, you got it wrong. Nope. I mean, you don't even have to get outside of one religion. The First Baptist Church can tell you what's wrong with the Second Baptist Church. And something that I want you to notice about what he described about it from his answer of what do you think this came from? He didn't say, oh, I know this to be true. Yeah. He said, this is what right. I think. Uh, but I, I, he doesn't know for sure. He doesn't have a way to prove it to you, so he's not going to make a knowledge claim. Okay, it it makes sense. Um, like I said, I've I've listened to you guys for for quite some time, and um, you know, I I pose some of these questions to other theists, and it seems like it always comes down to three things: either they believe because they it feels good to them or they get some sort of gratification from it yep. or they're a fear of what will happen if they don't believe or they yep. just was raged with it for so long that they can't even think outside of it but so which one is it for you more open-minded uh, i'm sorry what was that which one is it for you uh for me you know i i think oh well i was brought up in it so that's where i first that's- got the God idea, but I think my own personal experiences and things that I've gone through growing up is what really makes me believe. I know that it's not an, um, sufficient evidence for anybody else to believe, and I'm and anybody can make that claim for their religious belief. Mm-hmm. So I can't argue that this is the one true belief when anyone can go off their own personal experience. But for me personally, uh, I've had experience where it's just it's just <laughs> undeniable to me that that this God. Okay. It exists and it's, it's very involved. It's interesting to me that you can admit that, you know, you know why what you believe is faulty, but you still believe it anyway. It, it's also weird that you, after pointing out that this is something you're raised in and that you're in agreement, you, you then introduced a new aspect to the conversation by saying you had an experience that is undeniably right. God. Well, what experience is that? Um, lots of experience, just, just well, pick situations. One. Just anything that's uh, actually undeniable. Pick, pick Any one, one that's thing. undeniably God. And if I can't deny it, I'll convert on the spot. Literally just one. You just said there's many. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, let me think. Um, I just feel that there's been situations in my life where ah, just one experience, sorry, just, one undeniable thing. One, it's just a collection. Of, it's just a collection of things. It's just. It's, it's just. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop here, Darius, and because Jen is pushing, and 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 I like that, but. It's clear that you're not going to be able to pick out the one. So what I'd like for you to do is yep. give it some thought. Call us back another week. When you find the, the the best example of something that was undeniably God, we'd be happy to hear it. If instead, upon reflection, you begin to realize that all these things that you interpret as undeniably God perhaps have other potential explanations... I'm cool with that too. Call back and tell us about that too. Because we're we're not here to just beat people up. Um, and if you're not able to come up with an example or not comfortable doing it now, then yeah, think, think about it. And, and I'm sorry if I'm know. pushing too hard. I'm just I really like that you're being so honest. <laughs> I'm like excited. <laughs> yeah, it, it is fine. I, 
I loved the fact that you were being honest right up until it seemed to get to a point where something protecting your religion is preventing you from continuing to be honest. So, uh, Just think on it and call All back. Right, well, yep, I absolutely will. Thank you for your time. Thank you Thank for you. calling.